Howdy folks, my name is Lanzo90 and welcome back to our tutorial series for Valheim where we're just playing a solo world. Again, if you want to see some multiplayer action, I do multiplayer streams on a dedicated server. We're pretty far into the game at this point, but uh, yeah, that's all up on the channel. And so, let's get back into Valheim here. Like I said, our tutorial bird's going to explain a lot of the same stuff, but uh, let's do, get through some of the basics here. So down in the bottom left hand corner, I don't think I've... Okay, I can, I can press tab and get to the bottom left-hand corner. You'll see that we have 25. This is our health, the red bar. Pretty obvious. This is our hunger bar. Uh, you always have this grace portion, though. You actually can't starve in this game, like unlike most survival games these days. Uh, you'll always just... Your minimum health is 25. Uh, right now, that's fine. But as we get into it, we're going to need lots of food and better food in order to have a bigger health bar so we can get further into the game. What do you have to say to us, Eugen? I don't remember the entire order of what you say. You sell this battery inventory. Most items can be crafted. However, due to your recent departure from Midgard, you'll have to recall the true shape of objects. Just pick things up and it'll all come back to you, I'm sure. My lethra brother, Munin, tells, tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wooden stone. So yes, you learn new recipes by picking things up in the world. It'll unlock anything that's related to that item. So we'll grab some stones, we'll grab some branches. Right now, it's easiest just to grab these ones on the ground rather than trying to chop down a tree or anything. Because we can Minecraft, Minecraft it up here. Let's go demonstrate, actually. But not on a big tree. <laughs> I don't think it'll even work on a big tree. Let's just see. Yeah, you can't, mine, you can't Minecraft a big tree. You can train your own arm skill, though, by doing that. But uh, these small trees, you can Minecraft these. Fortunately, it takes... A fair bit of uh, punching to do, though. Which is why I say just grabbing some of these branches on the ground is probably a little bit quicker at the start. And again, we'll also do the same thing with the stones. Ooh, I see a mushroom here. So a mushroom is one of the food items that we're going to find really early in the game. Sorry, I had to get my sound program up now and going. that's one big mushroom. Okay, so we got ourselves a mushroom. We can just right-click on this on our inventory to eat it. You can see it has a it says it has health 15, stamina 20, duration 600 seconds, and one HP per tick. So that talks about what it's going to give you for eating this. So we'll get 15 more health on our health bar, 20 more stamina. It's going to last for 600 seconds, and uh, tick is like it's probably like five or ten seconds long. It's not like a normal tick in games. Normally, like a single tick is like extremely quick. No, it's a very slow process to actually heal. There you go. There's our first point of health. So that kind of puts that in perspective for you. Ooh, there's some more mushrooms. Ooh, we got raspberries down here too. All right, we got some boars over here as well. Let's grab these raspberries. Same thing as the mushroom. We can just right click on that and get it into our gut. So boars are something we're going to have to start hunting here soon. But right now we're not capable of doing it. Boars actually pack quite a punch at the start of the game. Soon they'll be they'll be nothing to us, but right now, unarmed, they're uh, they're more than we can handle. They are aggressive, so we want to keep our distance from them. What do you have to tell me, Hugan? You found a snack. Consume it to improve your health and stamina. Be aware that before long you'll grow hungry again, so try to always have at least a couple of different meals ready. Indeed, I usually keep around like a stack of three different foods uh, of ten each, just so I can stay ahead. Dandelions, by the way, will be all around us at the start. They're uh, not really useful until a fair bit later into the game, so I'm just going to avoid them. Alright, so I could craft like a stone axe, a club, and all that stuff. I don't want to yet. I don't really feel like it. What I would like to do is I would like to get to the seaside or riverside, anywhere where there's water. I would like to try to find some flints so I can just skip the stone, or this, yeah, skip the stone axe entirely and move on to the flint axe. Which is a fair bit better. So, we'll just wander around, collect rocks and sticks as we go. We're actually not going to get a huge amount of rock at the start here because we can't really build anything made of stone yet. We'll occasionally run into runestones. They'll tell us more about the game. 
Old traveler, bear witness to my warning. We are many who have come before you, carried here by Owen's will to do his work. The path ahead is hard and dangerous great. If you hold your life dear, keep to these meadows and make your dwelling away from the trees. Fear the horn one and spare his kin. All right. So, yes, any biome except the meadow, extremely dangerous. Even worse, depending on the biome. But literally, you don't really want to build your base in any biome except, <laughs> except the meadows, even at high level. It's just a, just a pain to deal with. But here we go. We found some water. And start gathering some flint from the sides. Uh, there are some lizard-looking creatures out there. Those are necks. They are mildly aggressive. But necks are not a fight at all. They're very easy to kill. It's not like the uh, pigs that are highly aggressive and look pretty dangerous at the start. Grayling. It's like our first real like enemy kind of a creature. It's not a it's not an animal. They obviously have a pretty big aggro range. But uh, as you can see, they're scared of fire because they're made a tree. <laughs> and we will just use the starting torch to beat on them from now. That will light him on fire and he will perish. And we'll take his stuff. He gave us resin, which allows us to make torches. It's also going to be used for a lot of other things, but right now it's mainly for torches. We took him out nice and easily. Let's grab some more flints. We should be pretty close to being able to build our flint axe. This is a lot of necks. I have to remember that I'm so high level in my other characters that I'm going to have, like, highway blindness, basically. You know, when you've been driving on a highway for a long time. And you finally get off the highway and you're like, wait, uh, you like start, you're like driving way too fast because you're just used to driving on the highway. That's kind of where we're at. Ooh, that's interesting. We got a pre-built, pre-built house over there. That might be where we want to build. This little area is pretty nice, too. I like it when the terrain is like varied and interesting, which is why I said not to do the, not to do just the plain numbers or uh, plain letters. What I got with those maps is I just had like one big circle island that didn't have any interesting terrain on it at all. <laughs> just a big perfect circle, basically. Where this is much more interesting. So yeah, there is a little pre-built house there. Uh, that looks like the sacrificial altar where we're going to fight the first boss. So we want to get across this. The thing is, in this game, swimming is exceedingly difficult at the start. Eventually here it won't be a problem. But uh, right now we don't have a whole lot of stamina. We can, If we can walk over, we'll be okay. Okay, looks like we're alright. The problem is, if you run out of stamina when you're swimming in water, you start taking 5 damage a second. And obviously, when you have 42 health, <laughs> yeah, you die very, 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 very quickly. And your stamina goes down pretty quick swimming. So yeah, I advise avoiding swimming as long as you can. Once you have a pretty big stamina bar, you can mess around with swimming more. Let's go ahead and kill these next. They could drop meat, but it's actually not the most common. Not as common as a drop as you'd hope. Come here, Nick. I desire for you to perish. I don't know why he's running. That's not that's not really normal for them. <laughs> Normally, they just attack you. Why are you running? All right. So this little cleared area here seems like a great place to build a base. Actually, down there is, like, very flat. The only thing I'm concerned about with this location here... Obviously, we could try to take that pre-built structure if we wanted to do it in a hurry. The only concern I have here is I think this is a spawner that will spawn undead in the middle of the night. You know, I like to live dangerously. We'll go ahead and give it a shot. Eventually, we'll have a pickaxe and break it down, and then maybe they won't spawn there anymore. But yeah, I do like the spot. It's very, very flat, which isn't actually that easy to find in this game. Uh, Yeah, right here seems great. So, we will build a hammer. This is our crafting tool for buildings. 
see it unlocked all sorts of things. Now, when we select our hammer with two key or whatever key you put it on, if we press right click, it'll open up the building menu and we can tap through all of our different little options. If we mouse three on an object, that's middle mouse button, it'll delete it, but we can look at that later. And left mouse button, of course, places things. It is worth noting, though, that the hammer overrides a bunch of different commands you can do. Like, I don't think I can click on Hugin right now. Yeah, I can't click on him. With uh, the hammer out, so we gotta put that back away before we can talk or open doors or anything. It's annoying. With this tool, you can raise mighty halls and towering fortifications. Start by building a workbench. This in turn will enable you to construct other things. That's a big 10 4. So, here's our workbench. I wanted to kind of plop it next to this rock, but it's not really having it right now. We'll just toss it there. And he's going to tell us some more things. What do you want, Hugin? Workbench allows you to craft complex items, as well as giving you access to lots more building pieces. Do you construct with the hammer? Okay. Let's see. We do need to just build a little lean-to over this thing real quick, so I'm just going to build some walls, snap them together, as you might expect, and then we will grab some thatch roof, actually, let's do the shallow one, thatch roof's 26, yeah, we'll put those right there, because you cannot use your workbench if it doesn't have a roof over it, and roofs do have to be actual roofs, it has to be these pieces right here, or it can be the sloped ones, the deeper slope, I should say, but you can't put a floor above the workbench. It's, that doesn't count as a roof. And that goes for anything else. Like, beds also have to be roofed. They can't be out there. So here's our workbench. First thing I'm going to do is click this button to repair an item. It's this little hammer icon on the left side of the workbench. You can see all of our new options are opened up. And here's the flint axe I was talking about. So we can just completely circumvent the stone axe just by doing a little bit of elbow grease there. Of course, it'd be nice to be able to chop that little tree inspire our base. No, no, no. I'm all about skipping steps if we can do it. Find that I'm not your your normal tutorial video host who's going to tell you, well, first uh, make a potato and then turn that into a baked potato and then turn the baked potato into a deluxe potato and then put it in a blender and turn it into a smoothie. No, no, no. We're just going straight to the smoothie, man. <laughs> so let's go get this flint axe. Let's go get this bread. Actually, it's going to be a very long time before we can build bread. There's our flint axe. As I said, this video is probably going to be a fair bit longer than the last one because there's a lot more basics for us to get through. But yeah, now we got a flint axe and now trees ain't nothing. Well, there's still something, but they ain't, they ain't much as they used to be. And we effectively skipped a step of the game. So, frick you, game. I don't need you. Except I am fairly... Ooh. I mean, we could probably take a pig now. YOLO. We can take a pig with the flint axe, as long as he's by himself, at least. Biggie. By the way, repairing at the workbench did not require any resources. It doesn't consume resources like most games. And he's dead. Not a problem. We got leather scraps from him that unlocked everything that's popping up on the screen right now. Which is a lot of things. We're going to need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of leather scrap. So now what I'm going to do, there's plenty of things we could do, but what we're going to do is just gather more wood for our house. Should probably go check that other building just to see what's in it, because there usually is a chest in these buildings. Again, we don't need a ton of rocks, so I should probably stop grabbing it because it's pretty heavy. What is in you, house? Actually fairly substantial. As you can see, it is kind of a tall, uh, small house. 
But yeah, there was a bunch of loot in the chest. We can just click the take all button if everything in there looks fun to us. And grab all of it, which I did. And we got some uh, flint head arrows, 10 of them. We got three feathers right now. Getting these out of the chest is going to be the easiest way to get them because hitting birds is, well, with melee, I don't even think you can do it really because they run away even before you get very close to them. But even with ranged, it's fairly difficult. So now it is going to get dark soon. And like I said, I am scared that this is going to make a skeleton at nighttime. Things get more dangerous at nighttime. It's not like Minecraft where it's like apocalyptically worse. But it's uh, it's pretty dangerous at night. So we will. Oh, there's a pop-up when the world saves. At least in the single player. Interesting. Maybe it always is there. It's just I'm not the host on the other games. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just going to select the repair that way. Like, if you're having trouble seeing things because you have, like, a wall selected, you can still knock things down with the middle mouse button. It's just you'll have this wall everywhere. So I usually switch to repair so I can knock things down. All I'm going to do is knock down everything we built. Hopefully we'll get all the resources back. I'm not exactly sure what determines if you get all the resources back or just one of each. Because, yes, you can just get, like, one of each resource back sometimes, which is very annoying. Yeah, because I'm scared of that spawner, we are just going to sleep in this building for the night. So whip out the craft bench again. Obviously a very tiny little building here. <laughs> Which is why I don't really like using the pre-mates unless I have to. The other nice thing though is once we have a workbench here, we can take this whole building down. Hello, you can. He actually scared me a little bit. Sleep the night away in your bed and awaken feeling refreshed and full of energy. Another improvement to your home would be to have some chests where you can store items. We actually have one here. It's good practice to always have some spare equipment if something unfortunate should happen while you're exploring. Alright. wonder why these didn't stack when you grabbed them all. So we can get the you feel cold message. That means it's night time. And uh, we can lay in bed. Oh, I forgot. We need a fire. I'm a terrible, terrible host. I'm not uh, explaining all the rules of the game. I'm not sure this is going to work, actually, because it's building so small, but we'll try. The thing is, with fires, any kind of fire in the game, whether it's the campfire or hearth or anything else, there actually is smoke. Hopefully it's just going to go out through this little hole here, but uh, you can actually get smoked out if the smoke just builds up in your building. But now we are able to sleep. And you cannot place the campfire on wood. That's why I knocked that piece out and put it on the ground there. And it takes stone and wood to build the campfire. There we go. We could put more wood in it if we need to. But we're not going to keep this building. And it's daytime. The other nice thing is we've gotten a rested bonus now. Of 11 minutes. So rested lets your stamina go up faster. As we go on, you'll see that we basically have to have this bonus, so we'll probably run back to our base every time our rested bonus goes away. Be wary of the weather. When, temporary, when the temperature drops at night, or if you are wet, you will suffer from being cold. This will reduce your stamina region. Seeking shelter by an open flame is your best option when this happens. There you go. More reason to go into the house. However, that's where we'll leave this episode. I think we've covered... A fair bit of the basics, and I think the next one's going to be a little bit of a build episode where we build our real house over there because this little tiny thing isn't really going to cut it in the long term. But I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions about Valheim or anything else, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, YouTube puts a strong emphasis on viewer engagement now these days, which is all the things I've just listed. So they're more appreciated now than ever, although it always has been. But uh, until next time, I hope you have a good day.